Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. And today is our Discover Unit. We're going to be talking about plane crashes that、Ooh. happen. Remember, they don't happen that often. If you think about the number of flights that take off all over the world、True. every day, the chances of your being involved in a fatal plane crash are pretty much zero, or pretty close to it. So we don't want to scare you if all of you or some of you are planning、mm-hmm. to go overseas soon. Don't worry, you'll be okay. But sometimes these things do happen, and there is a television program on Discovery Channel. That talks about why planes crash. Hey, that's actually the title of this program,、yeah. and they're going to be talking about different plane crashes that have occurred in North America over the last several years. Pretty scary stuff. I was once on a flight, scared the pants off me. Uh-oh. Uh oh. We just went straight down for about five seconds, and I thought it's over.、Ooh. You know those air masks, those oxygen masks—they dropped.、Uh-oh. Everyone was screaming.、Uh, but then the pilot pulled up, and I thought, okay, I guess I get to live another day. What was it? Why? why did <laughs> they never told us.、Um, but it was scary. There was a lot of turbulence, and I think it just caught maybe a bad air current or something. Scary stuff. So if you've ever been in a plane that was having some difficulties, you know what I'm talking about. But you know there are different reasons for some of these crashes that we're going to be examining,、uh, at least in.、Uh, A couple of days of this program, but if you want to really see more, you need to watch Discovery Channel series called "Why Planes Crash." They're investigating the reasons behind them. Okay, let's get to it, everybody. Let's read the entire contents of today's lesson, and then we'll come back to discuss it. It's no secret that air travel has been deemed one of the safest modes of transportation. However, when things go wrong in the air, routine flights turn into the stuff of nightmares. Discovery Channel series "Why Planes Crash" investigates the causes of some of North America's worst plane crashes, bringing survivors and experts together to describe what happens when flights fail. Washington, D.C.'s Potomac River. Was covered in ice on the afternoon of January 13, 1982. Impatient commuters were stranded in traffic on the 14th Street Bridge, heading home early because of a snowstorm. At 4:01 p.m., the stillness of the traffic jam was shattered when Air Florida Flight 90 slammed into the bridge and plummeted into the frozen river below. The ill-fated flight. Had taken off from Washington National Airport merely 30 seconds before the crash. Rescue teams and news crews were on the scene within minutes. Dramatic footage captured helicopter crews lifting survivors from the river. Had it not been for bystander Lenny Skutnik, passenger Priscilla Torado surely would have drowned. Diving into the frigid water, Skutnik swam to her aid. And successfully pulled her to shore. Amazing as this rescue was, however, the National Transportation Safety Board (NTSB) announced several months later that the tragedy could have been avoided altogether. The board cited the captain's failure to order the removal of ice from the plane's wings before takeoff as a principal error. Furthermore, the board laid the blame for the crash on the captain's rejection. Of multiple pre-flight warnings from the co-pilot, and the two pilots' inexperience in preparing the airplane to fly in winter conditions. All right, everybody, let's discuss the contents of today's lesson. Again, it's our Discovery Channel unit, and we are talking about terror at thirty thousand feet. Thirty thousand feet is the height at which airplanes. Fly when they're going between different places in the world,、mm-hmm. or nearby that twenty nine thousand, thirty thousand, whatever. So here in the first paragraph, it says it's no secret that air travel has been deemed one of the safest modes of transportation. Yes, it's no secret. Every time we read about this, we realize that probably the most dangerous way to get around is to ride a motorcycle or cars or buses. They're all more dangerous than Airplanes.、Uh, if you 
talk about the number of people who are flying and how many people actually die per year. That compared to buses or cars or motorcycles, it's much lower. So here we have the verb to deem, which means to regard something or consider something a certain way. So yes, indeed, travel has been deemed, or people say that it's one of the safest modes of transportation. And of course, transportation is the act of getting from point A to point B,、mm-hmm. and that includes transportation. Both people and things. Yeah, a lot of times、uh, I've noticed that the British folks like to use transport.、Okay. Uh, what kind of transport are you taking? We typically don't use that. We say transportation in the states, but they're both correct. So,、uh, just how you get from one place to another.、Mm. However, when things go wrong in the air, routine or basic flights. Can turn into the stuff of nightmares. We use that phrase, "the stuff of nightmares," to describe something that's really horrible.、Mm. Going to the dentist for me is the stuff of nightmares.、Mm. Yeah, notice how I use that phrase. True, yeah. yeah, I don't think many people like going to the dentist. I'd rather go to the doctor. I'll be honest. Yeah. Well, I'm actually、uh, okay with going to the dentist. It's just something you have to do. You just have to go through it. And、uh, yeah, the last couple of times I had root canal. Ugh.、Uh, yeah, I didn't like it. It wasn't particularly pleasant, but it could have been worse. Let's put it that way.、Yeah. So indeed, <laughs> I'm sure dentists are very much aware that people don't like to come see them. True. So be nice to your dentist from time to time. And in any case, yes,、uh, when things go wrong in the air, well, this can be the stuff of nightmares. It could cause you your worst. Nightmare.、Yeah. It might even cause your death. But Discovery Channel's series "Why Planes Crash" investigates the causes of some of North America's worst plane crashes,、uh, bringing experts and survivors together to describe what happens when flights fail.、Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a documentary series here.、Uh, we are trying to answer the question why planes crash, and this particular program is focusing on North America, which includes. Canada and the United States and Mexico, and indeed,、uh, plane crashes, of course, occur all over the world. The most notorious, of course, was、uh, Malaysian Flight 370. Which、uh, nobody knows what happened. It totally disappeared without a trace. Yeah, some debris turned up last year in the ocean, but they still don't know what caused it. But in any case, plane crashes do occur in North America, probably because North America has the most traffic in the air of any place in the world. That's true. So if you have more airplanes taking off, there's more of a chance or a greater chance that they will. Have some sort of accident. We hope that doesn't happen. Well, here's one that we're going to start with: Washington D.C.'s crash that happened when the plane crashed into a bridge and landed in the Potomac River. Very famous crash. I remember hearing about a hero that helped save some people, but he ultimately died in this crash. Oh, he did. Yeah, the helicopters were over the river trying to rescue people by throwing down a life a life saver. What do you call those? And a life. Yeah, yeah, they're、know. round. Yeah, they're life savers, and they kept throwing it down, and it, he'd get it, and he'd hand it to the next person. But by the time they got back to him, he had gone underneath the ice.、Ooh. Died Ooh, because that、guy. water was very cold. Yes, it was in the middle of the winter there,、yeah. January thirteenth in nineteen eighty two, which was、uh, quite a long time ago. But I、yeah. remember hearing about this when I was much younger. Oh, they're called life preservers.、That's、there you go,、called. life preservers or a life ring or something. It kind of depends on what the shape is. A preserver is actually something you wear as a vest. A life preserver. And a life ring would be just a ring, basically. But in any case, yes, the Potomac River was covered in ice in January of 1982, and impatient commuters were stranded in traffic on the 14th Street Bridge heading home early because of a snowstorm.、Yeah. There was a snowstorm in Washington D.C. on that day. A commuter is somebody who basically goes between their home and work. I wouldn't call students going to school commuters. No. A comm- Commuter is, of course, somebody as I said who's going back and forth to work and home, and they had just gotten off work early because there was a big storm coming, but they were stranded in traffic. If you're stranded, you are stuck someplace and you just can't get out of that situation. You could be stranded on a small island in the Pacific Ocean, like、uh, Tom Hanks was in the movie Cast Away. He was stranded on an island, but here they were stranded in traffic. Traffic just wasn't moving. 
Yeah, here in Taiwan, you could possibly be stranded in an area because a typhoon arrives suddenly and you don't get out in time. Maybe you were in Gaoshan taking a vacation. The typhoon came and you couldn't get on a flight、uh, before it landed, so you were stranded there. Maybe you had to tell your boss, "I'm sorry, I won't be back to work on time." Oh no! So you can be stranded in different ways. If your elevator stops working in your building, you could be stranded inside that until somebody comes. And rescues you and gets you out. Well, they were stranded in traffic on a very busy bridge in Washington D.C., and they were trying to head home early because they knew a snowstorm was coming. People in Washington D.C. are afraid of even an inch of snow. They don't seem to be able to handle it, and the rest of America laughs at them. To be honest, now at 4:01 p.m., the stillness of the traffic jam was shattered. When Air Florida Flight 90, that was the name of the flight, slammed into the bridge and plummeted into the frozen river below. This is a really nice sentence、mm. that gives you a description of what it felt like, perhaps what it sounded like when this accident happened. Stillness describes a place where there's not a lot of sound. It's kind of quiet, and actually, in a traffic jam, you would expect it to be noisy, but. When you're stuck and you can't move for a while, sometimes those traffic jams, you literally can't move. Your car is not making any progress; it's so slow. That's kind of what was happening there. But this stillness was shattered, was broken. If you shatter something, guys, usually would describe like a piece of、uh, glass or a, something like a cup that's made out of glass, or even your mirror that you drop. If you drop it, it shatters into tiny little pieces. Here, it's not. Literal, it's figurative. So, if silence or the quiet is shattered, it's broken up. It changes immediately. Yes,、yeah, shattered like glass. It's also the title of a Rolling Stones song. Shattered, shattered. Check it out. It might help you reinforce this word in your vocabulary. But the stillness was shattered when Air Florida Flight 90 slammed into the bridge. Slam. That means it hit something with great force and also created a big sound like slam. Boom.、Uh, the car slammed into the tree, for example, or his fist slammed onto the desk when he was so angry. Angry, yelling at his employees, and the silence was shattered. The flight slammed into the bridge and then plummeted into the frozen river. Before to plummet means to fall straight down at a high amount of speed. So when things fall off buildings, they plummet to the ground. That's right. Plummet. It's a great word. It's a verb that means to go from a a higher level and drop straight down. We use it oftentimes when we talk about the stock market. Remember, at the beginning of the year, the stock market just plummeted,、oh, yeah, so yeah. people lost a lot of money. So the airplane went straight down into the frozen river below. Right now, guys, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back to talk about what they discovered. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny. 今天我们看的是第八单元，是一个有关于高空惊魂记。我们先来看这个标题，很特殊。Terror at thirty thousand feet， 这是三万尺的高度。这样子的高度，当然跟空中旅行、跟飞机失事有关。那我们看一下这个文章的开头里面就提到说。在空中旅行，现在一般人觉得它可是最安全的交通形式之一。看到这个字 “dim dim”， 感觉上哎，好像比较少用。其实 “dim” 它跟 “consider” 用法呢很类似，都表示认为。它后面呢会加补语，你认为什么事情怎么样？那这个地方 “dim” 后面说到的，它被认为是。最安全的交通形式之一，这其实就是 dim 后面的补语。好喽，我们再来往下看，下面再说呢。一旦呢有什么事情出了差错，那可就是梦魇一场了。那今天的重点其实呢是一跟一个 Discovery 频道上的电视节目有关系，它叫做 Why Planes Crash。这个中文名称我们翻成“飞机安全大调查”，所以呢，它节目内容就是要谈一些飞机坠机事件的原因为何。在下面这一段里面。
就说到了，这是一个重大的失事，飞机失事事件。时间回到1982年，在 Washington D.C.， 也就是美国的首府这个地方呢，当时发生了一件悲惨的空难事件。他这边提到时间，大家要留意一下，因为在英文里面呢，我们常常会搞不清楚介系词怎么用。以这边呢，他说到的时间是一九八二年的一月十三号的下午。那我们想想看，如果你纯粹是要讲下午，那是 in the afternoon； 你纯粹要讲一月十三号，那是会说 on January thirteenth。可是这个地方他说的是。一月十三号当天的下午，所以你要知道，当你有一个特定时间，接系词是用 on， 所以整个就是 on the afternoon of January thirteen, nineteen eighty two。这个特别留意一下。再来呢，还很有趣的就是，当他后面要提到当天下午四点零一分这个时刻，你用的接系词就是 at。因为基本上，你如果是谈一个精确的几点几分，那么介系词当然会是 at。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, let's continue talking about Air Florida Flight 90. Way back in 1982, in the middle of winter, this flight took off from the airport in Washington D.C. and then slammed into the 14th Street Bridge. There were commuters waiting there. They were stranded in traffic, and after the plane slammed into the bridge or crashed into the bridge, it plummeted into the frozen river below. I remember that it actually went into the water there and broke through the ice. And the ill-fated flight had taken off from Washington National Airport merely 30 seconds before the crash. Isn't that airport now called Ronald Reagan yeah, International Reagan Airport? Yeah, Reagan National Airport.、Uh, yeah, previous、uh, United States president. There and if a plane international airport, international of course it、yeah. goes to other countries as、yeah. well. And of course, if a plane leaves the ground and goes into the air, it takes off. And the opposite of that is landing. The plane took off from this airport, but it had some problems, and then it crashed thirty seconds later. We call it ill-fated, guys, because it was destined to fail or have bad luck. It was just in the cards, you could say. It said its destiny was to end up in the the river, which is horrible.、Mm. Well, rescue teams and news crews were on the scene within minutes. That's a big news story right there. It happens right there in a very busy part of Washington D.C. So the rescue crews and teams and even the news folks showed up very quickly. If you're on the scene, you're actually where the action is taking place. And sometimes you'll have news reporters who go. On the scene, or the reporting live on the scene, you'll often hear that phrase. Well, there was dramatic footage or video from cameras that、uh, the news crews were taking that captured helicopter crews lifting survivors from the river, and this is how we saw the video of that man. They didn't get a close enough shot to ever identify who this hero was. But we kept seeing someone grab that ring that they sent down from the helicopter. It was connected onto a big rope, and they would lift those survivors from the river as they held onto it. They never got、uh, got the name of that wonderful fellow, but they had lots of footage, and it was really dramatic. Meaning, wow! When you watched it, you had a lot of emotions as you saw these poor people in a frozen river. That ooh, that was cold then. Yeah, that was、uh, one particular hero you were talking、yeah. about. But there's another fella here. Had it not been for bystander Lenny Skutnik,、mm -hmm. uh, passenger Priscilla Tirado surely would have drowned. So had it not been for this bystander, if he had not been there, notice this is using past perfect、mm -hmm. tense because we're talking about an action that took place in the past, and then another action that took place in the past、uh, relative to that other action in the past. So had 
had it not been for him, this other person would have drowned.、Uh, to drown means to die because you have water in your lungs,、uh -huh. usually when you're swimming or something like that, or if you're in water. This was a bystander, somebody who was just present there. It could have been a commuter stranded in traffic there. He saw what happened and he thought, "Gee, I better help out in case someone needs help." Well,、there. maybe not... she couldn't swim. You know? uh, could be, or he could have just been standing by the river at that time. Who knows? But that's his name, Lenny Skutnik, and he saw Priscilla Torado there. Oh, it doesn't look like she can swim. I'm going to dive in there and save her life. He dove into the frigid water. We're using the progressive tense here, diving into the frigid water, like we're describing the scene as it happens. He jumped into that really, really cold water. That's what frigid means. Very cold. And he swam to her aid. Her aid means、um, to help her, and successfully pulled her to shore. So she was really fortunate. I'm sure she's always going to be grateful to Lenny for saving her. And to jump into an ice, icy river was pretty brave on his part. So amazing as this rescue was, however, the National Transportation Safety Board, also known as the NTSB, announced several months later that. Sadly enough, the tragedy could have been avoided altogether or completely, because they discovered some very, very troubling things, didn't they? Yeah, I think most flights probably could have been avoided. It's probably some kind of、uh, negligence on、uh, the part of someone. But some flights、um, are destined to crash. Hey, sometimes、uh, they have bombs on board.、Uh, yeah, that's true. And、uh, well, you could say, well, if they had better security measures,、yeah. it could have been prevented. There's always this hindsight. But in any case, here they did say that hey, it could have been avoided. It could have been prevented. And the board here, the NTSB, the National Transportation Safety、mm. Board. Uh, they cited the captain's failure to order the removal of ice from the plane's wings before takeoff as a principal error. So they they said that this was the main problem. The principal error, an error is a mistake. Principal just means the main one. There were other errors, other problems, but this was the big one. This is the one that probably caused the plane to crash. And this happened just before takeoff. He did not order the removal of ice from the wings.、Mm -hmm. Boy, that's that's kind of silly. Why、yeah. wouldn't he do that?、Especially、Maybe he's not used to flying in cold cold weather. He may have been from Texas or someplace、mm -hmm. where they just don't see ice like that. A removal is just when you actually get rid of something. A snow removal in the winter is actually quite expensive. Yeah, and you have to do that before taking off. Take off here is the noun form of the verb phrase to take off to go up into the sky. Furthermore, the board NTSB that is they laid the blame for the crash on the captain's rejection of multiple pre-flight warnings from his able co-pilot. So if you blame somebody for something, you say, "Hey, this is your fault because of something they did or didn't do," and it looks like he. You know, he said, "Eh, I don't need your your warnings. I don't need your advice, you little co-pilot. I'm the important pilot here. So if you reject something, you turn something down. You say no to it. You say you don't want it. So rejection is the noun form of the verb to reject. If some guy asks you out for a date and you don't want to go, you can reject his offer. That's his rejection." Remember, girls. A lot of times,、uh, guys are afraid of rejection, and that's why they don't ask you out. So maybe you should give them some hints or something that you want to go out with him. Don't just stand there and do nothing. But in any case, here, yes, indeed, the rejection of the warnings from the co-pilot were ignored. He said, "Meh, I'm going to poo-poo that. You don't know what you're talking about. You're just the co-pilot. I'm the pilot. I know what's going on here." This co-pilot did this multiple times,、yeah. or many times, but the pilot still ignored those warnings from the co-pilot. And then also the two pilots here, the co-pilot and the pilot, they had some inexperience,、mm. which means they didn't have enough experience in preparing the airplane to fly in winter conditions. And as I just said, maybe it's because they were both from areas of the United States that. Don't experience winter very much, so they didn't think it was all that important, or they didn't realize this, or they simply did not have the experience. Kind of sad, huh? Yeah. You know, there were people who died in this crash, although some,、uh, fortunately, were able to be saved in time. 
But it is sad to hear that if they'd just done a couple of things before takeoff, they would have been okay.、Mm. Sad for the families.、Indeed. Really sad news. But it is、uh, nice to know sometimes when planes crash, not everybody dies. They usually all do、yeah. in crashes, but sometimes they don't. And we're going to be talking about one of those flights in which people survived in our next program. So please tune in then. But that brings us to the end of our program today. Now I'm going to turn things over to the Chinese teacher. 好，继续呢，我们要来看在一九八二年这个。很悲惨的空难事件。那这个事件发生的过程里面呢，提到了说，这个 ill-fated flight had taken off from Washington National Airport。这个 ill-fated， 它修饰这个班机的时候用的这个形容词呢，其实是一个复合形容词。那我们知道，复合形容词有非常多种，有一种比较特别的。就是它其实呢是用一个形容词，然后后面呢加了一个名词，加上 ed。换句话说，这个名词呢，感觉上就好像被用成像一个过去分词的。这种字形一样，可是其实它是名词加 ed。这个地方的 ill fated， 这个就是一个很好的例子。那它的意思其实就是 doomed， 也就是很不幸的。好，那我们再来看下一段。下面呢就提到当时啊，其实，在几分钟内，救援小组新闻工作人员就到了现场，而且呢，画面上也捕捉到怎么样把幸存者从河里头给拉起来救回来。但是这边有一个句型，就是后面这里，他从 had it not been for bystander 这边，我们看到句型 had it not been for。其实呢，这种句型应该说起来它是倒装句，可是这个倒装句的来源不倒装的话呢，你要把 f 放回来，它的原来的句型其实是一个。If 的假设语气用法，句型是 If it had not been for， 好 ，If it had not been for， 这个中文的翻译其实就是要不是怎么样。当然，我们说它是倒装句，也就是说它的 If 已经不见了。然后呢，在这个句型里面，你会把这个助动词 H A D had 搬到句首，所以整个你看到的是。Had 开头的句子，但是它并不是疑问句，它其实是与过去事实相反的假设语气。当我们知道这个时间是在一九八二年，当时一月十三号那天下午发生的事，所以当时要不是有一位这个旁观者呢，把其中一个乘客给拉起来救起来，不然的话，可能又会多有有多一名的死者啊。可是没有，事实上他 survive， 他被救活了。那我们知道这个句型其实非常的重要，因为在假设语气里面，它用的时态很特别。如果跟过去式相反，你在 if 的条件句里面是会用 had 加 p p， 也就是过去完成式。而后面这个主要句呢，你就是会看到 would 像这样的助动词，语气助动词后面用 have。加 P P， 所以你会看到 Would have drowned 这样子的啊、呃、句型用法，这边要特别的注意。再来呢，下面呢还有一个句子，还是倒装句哦。从 Amazing 开始，这里 Amazing as this rescue was， 我们知道像这样子句子开头的 Amazing 这个形容词，看起来就会让你觉得哎。怎么回事？它好像不是主词，但其实呢，这个句型的 as 很重要，因为 as 是当做虽然来解释。那碰到 as 当虽然的时候，你是可以把后面的补语部分提到句首来，变成了一个倒装句。所以这边如果不倒装的话，原来的句子是 as this rescue was amazing。好，这是我们今天所有的讲解。谢谢大家。Thanks for joining us, everybody. We have one more day to talk about our Discovery Channel's "Why Planes Crash" series. We hope you'll join us for English Digest. I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. Goodbye.、Bye.